Will Montgomery here with week two of the Varsity 845 football show. This is Rivalry Week. There are two big traditional battles on Friday night. We'll start with perhaps Section 9's best football rivalry, Port Jervis at Middletown for the Erie Bell. These two teams have been playing regularly since 1897, and they've traded the old railroad bell over the past six decades. Both teams are coming off impressive week one wins. Port Jervis beat Goshen at home, and Middletown's Jordan Bryan ran for five touchdowns as the Middies beat Cornwall on the road. The Middletown players are excited for the bell game, with four to 5,000 fans expected at Faller Field on Friday night. They're a good team. Um, a little bit better than Cornwall. Uh, but we gotta, we got to make sure that our keys are straight. we got a pair of keys. But we got to make sure that we are sound with our offense, and uh, we have to make sure that we are playing, our, playing the right um, position, and we have to make sure that we... Uh, are doing what we need to do to make sure that we win. Uh, the, the crowd is the crowd to really get you once you play at another level. Um, it's, it, it's just it's, it's mind-boggling what it does, but it's also you have to also maintain focus. So my job as team captain is I have to make sure that my guys are also happy about playing the game, but also focused at the same time. Because if we're not focused, then we're gonna have it's gonna be a, a crazy mess. We can't have that this year, especially not this year. We just have to keep pushing. We can't let one win get to us. We can't predict the season. We have to take it one game at a time. Just keep on pushing. Just a big um, tradition to our school, and we're going to keep the bell and just keep the town on a positive note, you know. And nobody really wants to lose a rivalry game, so you, you, that's the motive right now. Our expectation uh, of fans is supposed to be an estimate of probably four to 6,000 people. So everybody in the town comes out to see the game. Um, school is it's crazy in school. That's all everybody talks about all week. Well, yeah, we, we just got to just gotta practice how we've been practicing. Uh, more energy, more enthusiasm. Uh, it's a big game, so they're looking forward to it just as much as we're looking forward to it. My offensive line, they performed spectacular. My offensive line, my wide receivers, uh, they blocked, they did, they executed. We executed, um, and they just got me the ball, and I was able to help my team out. In Montgomery, Valley Central and Wallkill will meet in the Battle of the Valley as both teams vie for the coveted helmet. This rivalry started in 2001 and has been a competitive series. Wallkill holds a 9-6 edge, and both teams will look to shake off opening week of losses in this one. Uh, it's been a big rivalry since, like, before I can even remember. But um, it's going to be a good game. Hoping that, like, we know a lot of people there. It's going to be a good crowd and everything. The crowd hypes up the intensity and everything. We should play better. So, yeah. Um, I play lacrosse. I wrestle. And I've, I've stopped playing football after... Eighth grade, then I was supposed to come back last year, but I tore my ACL before the season started, so that set me back for a little bit. And then this year I'm coming back. Uh, yeah, like all sports, like you have to like work hard for it, and anything that you got to do, you got to do it. So the coaches are great, the team is great, can't ask for anything better. But um, it's just all about the hard work, and I, everything, every sport is the same. We know a lot of the kids actually. I played with a lot of them, but. This is a big game for us. We want the helmet. I mean, we're friends. You know, it's not going to be like a, like a war like last year, especially um, Coach Regan being a Valley Central teacher, usually teaching there. It's going to be big. We want the helmet for this year. You know, honestly, the team wasn't really together when he came here. It was all divided. We had a lot of uh, issues last year. But him coming in, we've all gelled a lot better since he's been back, since he uh, came. So I, had a, I had a few issues through the off season that I uh, – I wasn't able to be named a captain, but I had told, told Coach, even though I'm not named a captain, I'm going to be vocal. I'm going to try to lead the team because, you know, I want to I wanna do good. These are all my friends, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's always came natural. It's always came natural. I, I'm a vocal person. I like talking. I like interacting, you know. I think you know what it is. We, uh, we trained pretty hard for the uh, beginning of the offseason, going into, the, like, our first scrimmage against Kingston and everything, we thought we were on top. We thought we were going to do a lot better than we had, uh, anticipated. And then we got in there, we just, they were they were a physical team, you know, and we just, we didn't execute. So this week, that's, that's, what, that's what my motto is. I've been telling everybody, execute, execute, execute. We need to be perfect throughout this, uh, this practice week. Elsewhere in Section 9 football, Marlboro heads to Highland Falls to take on James I. O'Neill on Friday night. Both teams rallied for impressive wins last week. O'Neill rattled off 41 straight points in a comfort behind win over Burt Catholic, and Marlboro got hot in the second half in a win over Spack and Kell. Can either team find first half consistency this week? Millbrook plays at Sullivan West at 7 p.m. on Friday. Both the Blazers and Bulldogs are coming off losses in week one. 
This Class C matchup will give one of these teams a big boost of confidence heading into the rest of the season. Saugerties plays at Goshen at 1.30 p.m. on Saturday. It's another Class A game for Goshen, which lost to Port Jervis in Week 1. Saugerties ran for over 500 yards in a win at Monticello. And finally, Cardinal Hayes plays at Monroe Woodbury at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Cardinal Hayes of the Bronx went 9-3 a season ago, and that included a win over Cornwall. Monroe Woodbury is 1-0 after a win at Warwick and gets a great non-league challenge in this game. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Check out more high school sports coverage on varsityafor5.com.